Hello, welcome back to my channel. It has been a while. Life has been lifing, so I thought I would give you a good life update, like a thorough life update, but a two in one, because I'm also going to be making an Oreo cheesecake. Now, I should say Oreo cheesecake, because I will be making this up. Cheesecakes are pretty simple. I've been baking or making or putting stuff in pans for a good couple of decades, wow. <laughs> A good couple of decades now and so I'm just gonna back myself and it will taste okay and you can join me on the journey. I have some friends coming around for dinner tonight which is the first red flag really because a cheesecake should ideally sit in the fridge overnight but it is what it is. We're having pho and I'll be making that later. I will not be filming that because I will be doing that also last minute. And I just thought it'd be nice to have a little cheesecake dessert. And the reason we're going for Oreo is because I recently made an Oreo cake. I might put a picture in here. So I've been doing a lot of baking over the weekend and it's left me with that awkward post baking fridge where I've got so much stuff like cream and cream cheese and buttermilk and all this stuff that needs to be used but has nowhere to go. I'm gonna try and get as much of it as I can into this Oreo cheesecake while still keeping it delicious. The leftover Oreos being number one, because I tend to overbuy. Whenever I buy for something, I just double whatever I need because I have this innate concern of not having enough, which is probably something for a therapist. But anyway, first things first, I'll get my apron on. And as I try to assemble something that looks like a cheesecake, I'll start talking about life. Do you like my kitchen, by the way, you guys? It's green now, it used to be black. This took me days and it probably deserves a video in itself. I tried to vlog it, but it was too hard because it was so depressing to cover this whole kitchen by myself in green DCF fix. It was so hard, but it looks amazing and it brightens up the place so much. Okay, what was I doing? If you hear any weird noises and stuff, don't worry. It's just because this flat tends to run very warm. So I've got like every single door and window open to try and keep it cool enough to film this whole video. I'll have to do a flat tour for you soon because it's so different. Recently, I've been really just loving like color and pastels and pink and all things pretty and frilly. Like look how pretty and frilly this little apron is. Like I've just been loving that recently. And I've done that in my house. Like everything has changed. I went to North Wales for two weeks stayed in a cottage, that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day, stayed in a cottage and I was like, I don't want my flat to be modern and beige anymore. I want colour and I want sheep on things. And so I literally have sheep coasters and sheep pillows, but it works and it makes me feel happy and I can't wait to show you it. Anyway, we've got the apron on. So I think the first thing we'll do is blend the Oreos. I don't know um, how many I should use for Oreos. I'm going to save for some decorations. And then I'm just gonna crush up the rest in this blender by here. Now, usually with a cheesecake base, um, you would put some butter in, but because Oreos have this lovely little cream in the middle, I'm just gonna try and do it without any butter. Like I don't wanna have to pull them all apart and scrape out the inside. I'm just gonna use that little cream cheese filling, whatever it is add the butter and we'll see if that works. I mean, it looks great. Yeah, no, it's a little bit too crumbly for my liking. Okay, we'll add, we'll add some butter. We'll add some butter to the base. Ooh, do you know what I do have that I need to use? I need to use buttermilk. I wonder if I can add buttermilk to the bottom and if so, what that would taste like. I don't think that would taste very good. Or maybe it would add a much needed pang. Do you know what I mean? I think I'm gonna do it. I need to use this buttermilk. So the buttermilk is going in, baby. And then at least, you know, there's something original about this. How much buttermilk I hear you ask? As much as you need to get rid of. It was too much. And now it's very liquidy. Oh no! I ruined everything! I got greedy and I ruined it all. I mean, it is delicious. That is absolutely delicious. How many spoons do you think I'll go through while filming this video? It's very gloopy, but we're just gonna power through. And what I might do is make a ganache. <laughs> I think I'll have to make a chocolate ganache to go on the bottom 
So this is gonna be an Oreo pudding, not a cheesecake, because I got overly excited that I was using up the leftover buttermilk and I put in too much and now it's a mess. I'm heating up some cream in the microwave because it's quicker that way. I'm guesstimating around about 250 mils of cream, so about 200 grams of chocolate. I don't know, I don't care, it's what I'm gonna do. I thought that while that's heating then, I can catch you up with life. The first thing was to talk about fitness, because I know that so many of you are here on my channel because of my workout videos and fitness videos. I have been loving looking after my body recently, like an insane amount. Like I'm so grateful. I feel like working as a doctor and being a woman and just being alive, there's so much opportunity to appreciate what our bodies can do for us and, and how lucky we are to like have them. I'm 29 now, so I'm about to turn 30. And I have been reading, studying all the new research on the best kind of exercise, the best kind of diet, all the different ways we can look after our body. I work on oncology, so I see loads of people getting diagnosed, treated for um, cancer every day. So I've been really interested in what we can do to prevent and stop, you know, what is honestly such a horrible, horrible illness. Yeah, I think that should be warm enough. So I've got my cream there. Um, and so with that, I've kind of been trying out different things. Oh, it might be a bit hot. <laughs> different things and different lifestyles and ways of eating and moving just to look after my body. And I've just been getting this deep appreciation for what it is to be healthy and be alive. Um, now, for me at the moment, sometimes I don't like sharing what I'm doing with my diet and body because, you know, it can make people feel a certain way or feel like they have to be doing that as well. And so please don't feel that way. This is just me, what I know works for me. And I've been through a process, let me tell you, I've been through a process of learning to love myself, learning to um, just accept myself to the point where nowadays I see the, the kind of shape and size of my body as almost being similar to like the outfit I choose to wear. Like if I'm a little bit thicker, that's cool. If I'm a bit slimmer, that's cool too. Um, so I really, there's not, as deep or difficult an emotional connection that I personally have at this moment in time, that might change, um, to how I look. Um, so I've been really free with experimenting on what actually is literally just best for me in this season of life. Um, and a podcast I listened to recently was done by Stephen, and I, I'm so sorry, I cannot remember the lady's name, but I will insert it into the description of this video. Um, and it had one of those catchy titles of like lose weight in three days or whatever. Um, but she was essentially talking about fasting. Now I've been reading and um, studying a lot about fasting recently. And as a Christian, fasting is something which is not foreign to me at all. You know, people fast, we fast, like that is what we do. I have been fasting more just because I love it. Number one, I feel so much clearer. I had this time when I was away for a while and I was eating so much junk because it was kind of a high stress, really good situation, but a high stress situation. And I was kind of just comfort eating my way through it. And I would get the biggest crashes in the afternoon while I was just digesting lunch. And I just couldn't rely on my brain power during the day with the way that I was eating. And so with fasting, it's really helped me to just have a really predictable, easy, stress-free way of um, knowing how I'm gonna feel when in the day. Um, and alongside that, I've actually been trialing a vegan diet, which is so funny as I pour all of the animal products and milk <laughs> into this cheesecake. And when I say trialing, I mean just very casually, just choosing vegan options when it's an easy option, which actually these days is pretty often. Fasting has made that so much easier. Trying to find a healthy, delicious vegan meal three times in a day is a lot of work. Whereas if I only have to do it like once in my evening meal, it's so much better. Now, I'm not super strict about this fast. Sometimes I skip a day. Again, it's just what's been making me feel really good recently. Oh, look at that gorgeous ganache. I love baking. It's just so satisfying and fun. Look how pretty that is. I think my ganache is done. So what I'm gonna do is just pour it and use that as a base for the cheesecake. Um, but yeah, so with that aside, I've also been just doing a wide range of exercise. So I started boxing, <laughs> which has been so much fun. Um, I haven't been doing as much of that recently. Yoga, I absolutely love. I've been getting so bendy and so flexible. Um, always, as always, weightlifting and just getting strong again. I was doing some one rep maxes of deadlifting the other day. Um, and was glad that I was still able to deadlift 
for deadlift 150 kg. So staying strong and doing so many home-based workouts. So so many like hit intense workouts, which again, you can get from my home workout plan, which by the way is currently free <laughs> if you click the link in the description of this video. I'm really loving the way, not only the way I look, but the way I feel. I feel, I cannot tell you, I feel so energized. I feel so energized while eating super plant-based and fasting. And that is just the weirdest thing. And also it's easy. One thing about me is that I'm, I'm not one for like, oh my gosh, you have to do this, do this, do this. If I can't, if it's not simple, if it's another job on top of my three jobs that I already got, uh-uh. Whereas with fasting for me personally, I get to be so lazy. I can literally just be like, I can't be bothered to make breakfast. <laughs> And, oh, oh and, the, and it's good for me, okay. Um, so yeah, I'm not recommending everyone do that. Obviously everyone has different health needs and, and yada yada. Um, but I'm trialing it so far and I love it so far. So I'm gonna put that in the fridge to cool. Don't judge, don't, don't look in my fridge and judge me, okay? I'm very much living a single woman with no kids, bachelor kind of life. And because I'm fasting, I kind of just buy meal, meal per meal. <laughs> So yeah, don't judge that. I think what we really need is to tidy up a bit. I'm a big tidy as you go kind of gal, so BRB. All right, so what I've just done is I have whipped up some double cream until it's just about firm and holding its shape, as you can see. Now I'm just gonna add in soft cream cheese. So I think I should probably need about 600 grams. Something you don't wanna do is over whip, so. Yeah, I should really have mixed this separately. Some icing sugar. I'm gonna go for maybe like 100 grams, ooh, to start with. I think I remember that being, oh, okay, that's 115. Oh no, it's gonna go everywhere. Do you know what, screw it, Merry Christmas. It's all incorporated, so I'm just gonna scrape down the sides to make sure all of the cream and the cream cheese are mixing. Well, wow. just watching that very carefully because the last thing you want to do with anything cream based is over whip. And the one issue is that the ganache, I don't think it's going to set enough. Not entirely sure what I'm going to do about that. I'm very tempted to go down to Tesco and buy some more Oreos, but I promised myself this would be a use everything up kind of project rather than a buy more stuff kind of thing. But I feel ashamed to do a terrible dessert. I mean, it'll be nice because it's sugar and Oreos and cream and fat. It's always going to be delicious. But I did try adding in some flour to the Oreo mixture just to make it more of like an apple crumble vibe, but it didn't quite work. And what I've got is more of a sludge. I had a bright idea. The cheesecake is just not going to be ready in time because the ganache was still warm. So what I've done, I don't know if this is allowed, but I'm doing it anyway. None of this is following any rules. I have put the ganache in the freezer so it will set nice and hard. And then I think I'll be able to scoop on the Oreo mixture onto that base. And then I can add actual cheesecake cream cheese mix on top of that. It's gonna be a very thick dessert, but while everything is hardening up and setting in the fridge and freezer, I thought that I would try and do the life update for you while I do the washing up. I don't know what's become of me. I'm literally all things pink, frilly, flowers, bows, and a clean kitchen. Like I've become that person who will be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry for the mess. And it is literally one spoon. It is one spoon on the table and I'm, I'm genuinely mortified. And I'm not trying to be that person. I only realized I was that person because my sister said to me the other day, you always say it's a mess and then it never is. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're right. Relative to me three years ago, this place is pristine. I don't know what made me think that I could both bake, <laughs> not even just bake, but like make up a recipe and talk in coherent sentences at the same time. But back to the life update. I'm still working as a doctor, as a medical doctor. I do a lot of work on oncology. I'm still locuming actually, which has been a real question of my life over the last few months. I've been a doctor for six years now. Can you imagine? I started this channel as a student. <laughs> and opened my fifth year medical results on this channel. Oh my gosh. And it's been six years since I've been working now. And um, please tell me that you also wash out your plastics and recyclables as well. You know, the question of going back into training keeps coming up, but I just know that for me right now, it's not the right time. There's so many different needs and um, passions that I have at the moment that 
I just have to give time to and I won't be able to as a full-time uh, in-training doctor. But I'm so, so blessed to have found some amazing departments to work in where I can still be learning and progressing and helping people. So I'm, I'm really actually really happy with my work in medicine, happier than I've been for a while. But it's good. I enjoy my work. I love the places and the people that I get to work with. And that is such a blessing because, as you guys know, I've not always been able to say that. <laughs> um, and then my acting. You guys, it's been two years since I started acting school. Can you imagine? Time flies when you're having a breakdown. Um, it's been two years since I started acting and I love it. I'm actually going to be leaving the part-time acting school that I've been in. My last performance is tomorrow. Then we've got my last lessons next week. I'm really excited. I feel like it's the right time. I feel like I've met, not even I feel like, I know I've met so many amazing people. In fact, I'm actually having a little flat party this weekend and inviting all of my friends that I've met while I've been in the school just to like, you know, have a goodbye acting school party. Um, because it has been a really big part of my life and I've learned so much and I, I've learned a lot as well from the people that I've been working and studying with. Um, and I just feel like it's time for me to now be able to put more into actually, you know, auditioning and booking jobs and writing. I am uh, writing. I've always written poems and short stories and songs, but now I feel like I have a really focused idea that I'm really passionate about that um, I'm going to be putting together soon so if I announce a show soon in London then please do come and support because it is taking my whole heart at the minute and I absolutely love it I wouldn't have it any other way um, so I'm very much still acting and I've actually booked I guess I guess I've done little bits of acting here and there like I've done a little advert I did the whole BBC show with Gareth Malone but that was more like reality TV and you know I was being me <laughs> um, uh, so since I've started acting school I did book a role on um, a musical uh, so like a, a research and development project so just working with people in the industry to develop you can't even recycle these why am I washing it what is wrong why am I washing something that I'm going to put in the bin it's who I am now you guys anyway and so I kind of had my first real job, I guess, so to speak, in North Wales. Um, I was there for a couple of weeks. And when I tell you, I truly believe that God has, God is just blessing me and leading me because it was as perfect of a first industry job as you can get. Now, as you can imagine, imposter syndrome, when, when I'm used to working on a hospital ward and then I'm surrounded by musical geniuses and people who've been performing for literal decades, that imposter syndrome really does try and kick in. And um, the people I worked with were so lovely and so supportive and so encouraging that it made me like, honestly, it made me emotional. Loving it, like it makes me so happy. There was a performance I did the other day um, that was truly so much fun. I did a monologue um, from one of Chekhov's plays, uh, The Seagull, and... It was so much fun. And the way one of my acting teachers had directed me to do it was just genius. And I've never enjoyed a performance so much. And you know when you know you've done a good job? I've, I've not felt like that, to be honest. After an acting performance, I've always been beating myself up. But that performance, to me, it almost feels like pivotal. Because I'm like, I can do this. God has anointed me. I'm here. I love it. I just want to keep learning. It's about just doing it and enjoying it and... It's so life-giving and I'm so grateful to God that like I followed that instinct and that passion and calling and whatever it was. People ask me like, why are you acting? I'm like, I don't really know what to tell you other than I love it. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. And I'm so, so grateful because, um, yeah, I feel like, oh, and this is going off tangent from the life update, but I feel like sometimes we have this thing where we live life as though we've done it before. You know, people will follow this prescribed path as though we've been here and done it before. And it's like, Han, this is all of our first times. Like we're all figuring it out. So when I kind of step back and look at it, there's two perspectives I can have. The one of I've done my life before and this is how it's supposed to be. And the other one of like, I have no idea. <laughs> and sometimes I can look through that perspective that we all do, I think, way more than we should. Like as though we've lived life before. Sometimes I can look at my life and be like, what are you doing? Why are you in acting school? You're supposed to be becoming a consultant and you're supposed to be doing this. And I'm like, where did that supposed to come from? Who said that? Like, I've literally never been born before. I've never been 29 and however many months old as I am right now. Like, it's all so new. And 
I'm so, so grateful to have the honor and blessing of being able to just figure stuff out. And like the, the life that I'd imagined for myself when I was younger, first of all, I had no idea about timelines. I did not know the cost of housing and cheese when I was making those previous plans. But to have this kind of free, you know, single living period where I can just, I can do stuff and it doesn't actually affect anyone else negatively it's actually just a great story. So even when I'm telling friends like, oh yeah, I don't think I'm going back into training right now. And sometimes, you know, they might be a little bit concerned or they might feel a certain way, but really they love the drama. So I'm just out here. I'm out here winging it. Realizing that this is all new. I have never existed on this planet before. So no one but God really, you know, can reveal to us what we should be doing and when. Um, it's just so freeing because it's like, ooh, it's like, oh, it's a, it's a canvas. It's a blank canvas and God has given me the paintbrush and I get to paint. And it is so much fun. It is so much fun and I'm so grateful. Um, and I realise that there's a lot of like, yeah, that's a really big state to say. Because also, this is what, do you know what? This is why I've struggled with sharing on YouTube recently is because I've just made my life sound perfect and amazing. When I tell you there have been so many incredibly difficult personal challenges in my life that I've had over the last couple of years that I won't go into. I don't think I'll ever, I have no idea. I, I personally don't think I'll ever go into certain topics on YouTube because I don't think that um, I would be able to do them justice. And also I don't mention anyone else. So <laughs> my YouTube channel is only ever about me. But when I tell you there've been such heartbreaking losses and there's been grief and there's been there have been so many difficulties in life recently and the fact that through all of that um god has given me so much joy and peace within those situations or beyond them or through them is just crazy so yeah i don't know i think i'm i'm a very positive person i'm always practicing gratitude and Sometimes that comes across when I tell you guys about my life. So please don't watch the video thinking, oh, Sarah has no challenges. Like, girl, I've had them. I'm praying that God will spare me <laughs> from any similarly sized ones in the future. Um, but yeah, that's just to say that I really do just choose a completely positive view on my life all the time. So if it sounds like everything's perfect, it's because I'm making it sound like everything's perfect. And it's because I'm choosing to view things as being perfectly aligned, even the challenges being that there's so much gold within them, the silver linings, they're not silver linings, they are just diamonds and gold within those challenges and that, that keep me uh, moving towards the whole purpose of this life, which is to love God and love others. Um, anyway, that was a sermon, and my camera's saying it's over here, and what else are I gonna talk about? Friendships, um, friendships are amazing. I'm gonna do a video about how to make friends in London and in your late 20s, because I've been really intentional about it, and I'm not gonna lie, you guys, I'm getting pretty good. I'm getting pretty good at pulling a friend. I think that making friends is a lot like dating and you've just got to be confident. You've got to ask people out. And I'll show you how to do that in another video, but I've been really trying to be intentional because of all the challenges I've been having in life. It means I kind of like, I don't want to say I lost my head, but I wasn't investing the quality time. Like I'm a big people person. I love people. I think that's why I love medicine and I love acting. And so when I would like look back on my life and I'm like, oh, I haven't seen this friend in ages. I, that was heartbreaking for me. So I've been really trying to just reach out to old friends and catch up and do things and just show them love. Showing romance to my friends um, is something that I'm really trying to do at the moment. And I love, I love that. But oh, I love that. So that's another thing, friendships. At first in London, I was super lonely, had no friends. But now I feel like I've really been able to get like wonderful people in my life. And I'm so grateful to God. And the people who come around tonight actually are from my small group in church. And that has been a real help. Like I started a small group basically. I was like, oh, I want to have dinner every night with friends. Not every night, that's a lot. Every week and Bible study with friends and grow spiritually and emotionally. And it was really hard. <laughs> Again, I'm glossing over that. Um, I, yeah, that was a really big challenge. I'm making that sound super easy. It was so stressful. But the fruit of that now is that I'm able to do life with these amazing people and it's really fun. And then London life, uh, I've got that on as a heading to talk about, but to be honest, it's kind of boring. Well, it's not boring. It's really cool. I love being in London. It's so weird. I never wanted to live in London. And now that I'm here, I'm like, I, would, I don't want to be anywhere else right now. Maybe in like two years, maybe like LA or something. But even then, I'm just like loving being in London. And then, oh, I'm turning 30 this year. I sighed, not because I'm not excited to turn 30. I've always had this really 
just insane excitement to be 30. Ever since I was like 10, I was like, I want to be 30. <laughs> um, and the reason I sighed is because I'm currently trying to plan my 30th birthday party. I want to go away somewhere. I want to rent a villa with a pool near a beach. So if you have any suggestions, I have invested way too many hours of my 20s um, trying to figure out how I'll celebrate turning 30. I also want to throw a party. I don't ask for much. I don't ask for much. So if anyone has any suggestions of amazing villas that are modern design with like an infinity pool and they are right on the beachfront and they're somewhere that is hot in September, then please let me know in the comments. I've taken the ganache out of the freezer because honestly, I just can't really be bothered anymore to wait. So what I'm gonna do is just try and like push this non-biscuity Oreo mix. Ooh. Oh yeah, that'll work. I'm just gonna do it in little little bits, little crumbs, and then we'll try and like smooth it out because I realize I don't actually have that much of this Oreo mix, even though it is gonna be quite a thick base altogether. Oh no. And I really want it to just sit on top so that we still have layers. Oh no, I've done that terribly. I think this might actually work. I might get away with it. This might be a delicious dessert. Who knows? I pray so. Honestly, when you've got cream, fat and all the rest of it, you can't go too far wrong. Okay, that'll do. That's about as evenly covered <laughs> as I think I'm gonna get it. Cheesecake mixture. So then this just goes on top. Oh, it does actually look quite nice to be fair. It's the contrast, I think, of the white and the black. I'm tr a true believer that in baking, what matters most is, well, maybe not most, but your tools can change everything. All righty then. Oh, and it's not too full, you know. It's actually not looking like overly filled. Oh my gosh, will this be a good dessert? Something you can spin. So then, it allows you to get a nice even layer on cakes. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna decorate, and for that I'm just gonna get the Oreos and I'm just gonna break them in half. Oh wow, that broke in the complete opposite direction than I was expecting. And I'm just gonna do a really lazy decoration, basically. So I always, whenever I'm placing stuff on cakes, I just go for opposites. And that's a really foolproof way of making sure that you get stuff evenly placed. I do have some more dark chocolate chips. So I will just dot them around the edges. All right, we can take off the apron. Oh, and there we have it, the finished product. This delicious, I think, I don't know, we will find out, Oreo cheesecake ready to be served to my voluntary victims this evening. But the point of this video was not to teach you how to make a really rogue cheesecake. It was just to catch up and say hi. So I appreciate you watching. I've missed you guys and I hope that you're well. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next if you want a little flat tour because you guys, this place has changed a lot. It's changed a lot. Either way, I will see you in my next video. Love you so much, bye. I forgot to film. <laughs> um, we've all finished dinner and I'm just tidying up now. But um, the cheesecake, the Oreo cheesecake was a hit. We had pho, by the way, in case you're wondering about all the random onions and bean sprouts. Um, but yeah, it um, was just a bit softer, but actually it worked really well. And the buttermilk and Oreos was amazing. Like buttermilk over butter, 100%, because it just had the right amount of kick. I actually had seconds and I did not expect that because when I make something usually, and I know it's made up, there's an innate distrust. But I had seconds, so did all the girls and they all actually took some home. So as ridiculous as this was, I will try and write down the recipe in the description box of this video if you want to make it because it was actually a pretty good accident. So all good. Okay, it's late. I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> Bye.